Hello, I'm Professor Vic Brokar, but my friends call me Professor 42. I'm here today to kick off a series of debugging your C++ programs set of videos. Debugging. Is it an art or a science? Well, my students claim it's a magical, mystical art uh, when I'm around doing the debugging for them. But as we'll see through this series of videos, it is both an art and a science. I will try to show you how we make use of the compiler uh, provided features to find the bugs and errors in a program, the science part, and I'll also give you some feel for the art or the knack of how to trace back where the bugs are coming from. Bugs, errors. This is my pet peeve in this industry. There's, there's just absolutely no excuse for mostly working software that is, programs with errors in it. We've all had experiences of working with programs that crashed and burned, or at the most exciting part of the game, the program died, or did some bizarre behavior. There's no excuse for it. The programmers failed at step eight in the program development cycle. They failed to thoroughly test the program. Thoroughly, by the way, means 100% completely, not well, I sort of did it. Well, we ran 10 test cases. Well, I think I tested it. No, it means 100%. But in finding the bugs and the errors, there is something that you can do to lessen the load that you've got to face. And it's what I call the ounce of prevention method. So as our first lecture on the art of debugging, we're going to look at something you can do that's positive, And that is this ounce of prevention. And let's get started. Okay, to test out our ounce of prevention technique, we're going to create a function called quadratic. It'll provide the two roots to a quadratic equation. If you recall your quadratic equation from uh, algebra, it has two roots, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole quantity over 2a. The Function then, quadratic, will be passed the two vari the three variables a, b, and c, and it'll return the two roots, root one and root two. And they are reference variables so that when the function quadratic down here stuffs answers in the fourth and fifth parameters, it will be the callers root one and root two that are filled up. Now quadratic is an example of a function that can have errors. What happens if we divide by zero? deep trouble. What happens if b squared minus 4ac turns out negative? We'd have an imaginary number. So, quadratic will return a bool indicating the success or failure of the process. Now, the main program is ridiculously simple here, just to show you that we can test the program a number of times without any trouble. Uh, after defining my variables a, b, and c, root 1 and root 2, I'll prompt the user to enter the values, and as long as we've got a successful set of three values, I'll call quadratic, passing it a, b, and c, and the two answer slots to be filled up, root 1 and root 2. It'll return true or false, and if it returns true, then I'll go ahead and output the two answers. In any case, I'll prompt the user to enter another trio of values and continue. All right, let's look at the quadratic function, which is an example of a function that can have problems. And we'll see how announcer prevention helps. For now, ignore the commented out sections. We'll get to them. The quadratic function, then, is passed a, b, and c, and the two answer slots reference variables root 1 and root 2 to fill up. It'll return true, I succeeded, false, we failed. Now, the initial way of coding it is to calculate the determinant, b squared minus 4ac, and then Calculate our two answers, root 1 and root 2, one being the plus the square root of the determinant, the other being minus the square root of the determinant. And then return true, we got our two roots. And this is an example of a mostly working piece of software. Let's see why. Uh, we'll test it. 1 minus 1 minus 2, a known solution. And we get perfect answers. Voila, our program should go to production. Let's try another one. One, nine, and, and one. That should work too. Beautiful, we get the roots as calculated. Let's put it in production. Let's not be hasty here. 
Let's thoroughly test this thing. How about 0, 1, and 2? Whoa, we got to divide by 0 error. But the compiler is saving us from a crash and burn and returning weird junk in our two answer slots. Let's try another one. How about 3, 4, 5? Bonk. Imaginary roots, but again, we have junk in the answer slot. So we have here a mostly working piece of software. Now, in the past, a number of individuals believed that the way to solve the problem is to put in some debugging assert macros. In order to use it, one needs to include the header file cassert, or in the old days, assert.h. Now, what the assert macro does is it says when it gets to this point in the code, assert that a must always be not equal to zero in order for us to continue to run. If it is zero, an assert throws uh, a, an exception and we trap it and the program stops. Then we'll go ahead and calculate the determinant, but then assert that this calculated determinant has to be greater than or equal to zero. If it isn't, it Debugging stops at once with an assert failure. Let's see how this works out. I'll enter my valid ones, 1, minus 1, and minus 2, and that one still works. Now let's enter the 0, 1, and 2. Whoa, we've got our assert failure, and at this point, the program stops. It is asserting up here that A it is not equal to 0, and it is equal to 0, so the assert fails and we're done. So the assert people say this is wonderful, this is what you should do in all cases checking for errors. Wrong. Let's take this one step further. We've got the asserts in there. We know when there's trouble we'll put it into production. Now let's see what happens when we put it into production. We'll enter our good value first, one minus 1, minus 2. All looks wonderful. Now we'll put in 0, 1, and 2. Boom! We're right back to production runtime crashes found by your users. This is no good. That's why the assert macro isn't a recommended procedure. Why? Because it only works in debug mode. It will not work in your production version. So, ounce of prevention. If there is a situation in your function, in your program, in your code somewhere that could spell trouble in, at runtime in production, then for heaven's sakes, it warrants an actual test. Here is the proper way, in my opinion, of handling it. If quadratic can be expected to have trouble, then check for it explicitly. If a is equal to zero, we're in trouble. Output an error. In this case, division by zero, and I also put in a equals zero. And then we don't want the caller's reference variables having garbage in them, so we'll arbitrarily set them to zero and return false. The function failed. Then I'll go ahead and calculate my determinant and then check. If it's less than zero, we're in trouble. We'd have an ima imaginary root. Can't take a square root of a minus number. So I'll output the error message, set the two root one, two values to zero so that they at least the caller's variables have some values, return false. If we survive those two tests, then calculate the two roots and return true. We've got them. Now we have a program that we can put into production and it will work fine. We'll enter our good value first, 1, minus 1, minus 2. That part's working. I'll enter 0, 1, and 2. Ah, we're now trapping the error and displaying the error message for the user. Try another one, 3, 4, 5. And we have the imaginary words, and we're in business. We've now got a working program. So, ounce of prevention. prevention. If you've got a situation that could trigger an error, for heaven's sakes, check for it explicitly, do something about the error notifying the user, and don't continue operation. Now, there is an alternative method. If you prefer the new C++ error handling method, then we could specify that our quadratic function will throw some C++ exceptions. In this case, I put on the informatory message that we could throw either an integer 
or a constant char star character string message. The throw on the prototype here, as far as Microsoft's concerned, is merely informatory. Nothing. Uh, we'll look down here at the quadratic function next. Quadratic function says it can throw an integer and throw a constant char star. You could throw any number of things. In this case, I'm throwing two possibilities. So the first thing is check. If A is equal to zero, then stop execution, throw a zero up the line to the C++ error handler. At this point, if A is zero, flow of control will go to the error handler and it will never, ever, under any circumstances, come back to this function. We are leaving the function permanently. If we pass that test, calculate the determinant, and then put in another explicit test. If the determinant is less than zero, throw a character string, in this case, imaginary roots. And again, if that happens, we will go up to the C++ error handler and leave this function forever. Only if we succeed will we calculate root one and root two. Notice this time the quadratic function uh, is a void function. It's not explicitly returning a true or false. No need to. The error handler is taking care of that situation. That means back in the calling program, when you're using the new C++ error handling process, it's a little more complicated. We've got to wrap the potentially failing functions uh, with try-catch logic. So here it says, try the following. Go call quadratic, passing it our three values, A, B, C, and the answer slots root 1 and root 2. If nothing happens bad, then we'll output the two answers, root 1 and root 2. However, if the quadratic function throws an error, then say we throw the, the integer 0, then the C++ error handler looks to see if anybody in the calling sequence is catching an integer. And in this case, we are. We say catch int x, and I'll output, hey, error, division by 0, and then just for fun, I'll output this integer x. Now, notice that this is a useful thing to throw. One could have potentially a dozen different errors being thrown by some complicated piece of software, and in this case, you could separate each one up by having a unique integer value and trap them all in one spot and then switch on X and display the appropriate error messages. On, on the other hand, if that didn't happen and we threw the character string, the constant char star, then we would catch it here with the uh, at this catch statement and output. In this case, I just outputted straight the error message that was given to us uh, and then prompt the user to enter values. One final detail, notice that I put this, the output of the two roots right here inside the try block. That's because if I had moved it and had it down here above the C out after the try catch sequence, then no matter what happened with the try catch sequence, it would always try to output the two answers. And in the case of division by zero or our imaginary roots, uh, we would be outputting garbage once again or using garbage values. Now that C++ error handler scheme is a little more complicated to use. Uh, it's up to you which way you go. The point I'm trying to make in this first debugging video is an ounce of prevention can save an enormous amount of debug time later. If there is a situation that could cause an error, division by zero, a bad pointer value, all sorts of things, then for heaven's sakes, test for it and take the appropriate error handling uh, methods. We'll explore further things with debugging in the next lecture. Thank you.